Now this is Stryker, FV102 I think it is. It's a very, very early one, but I'll um, explain that in a minute. Please remember to like, subscribe or click the little notification bell if you don't want to miss out on these videos. And I'd just like to say thank you to all our patrons for making this possible. Please join them if you can. Stryker was basically a guided weapons vehicle, but because it was designed around the old um, Spartan, which you can see from the shape of it, and the fact that the missile boxes laid flat when it was not in action, then it looks like a Spartan from the air and is less likely to attract unwelcome sort of shots. But uh, with the missile boxes raised, and they raised by about 35 degrees, to fire the missiles, which are swing fire, into a quite a sensible level of flight. Because of that, they, they have the power at up to about two, two and a half miles to knock out a main battle tank. They don't do very often and they leave miles of cable behind them when they fall and blow up a vehicle. But um, that's how you could trace back to the vehicle if you wanted to. But that was the first thing. Now, the, the original striker, the original idea, was to actually fit it with the turret from a Ferret 5 that had four missiles in a fully rotating 360 degree turret. And the idea was to put it on the back of this thing. But then someone came up with the even better idea. <clears throat> because it's called swing fire, it means it can pick up the target in any direction, more or less, within reasonable arc. And um, it means it can fire from any direction with the vehicle hidden and perhaps with the, um, the vehicle operator or the missile operator, I should say, dismounting and operating it by a lead up to about 100 metres away. So he could guide the missile onto the target from outside the vehicle, which meant that the vehicle could choose a hull down position or better before it fired and was difficult to see. That was how it's basically built on a CVR chassis, as all of them were. And that is being a very early one. It's fitted with the, um, the original Jaguar engine that wasn't changed until later when they actually switched over to the diesels. But this one is a very early one. And I tell you how you can tell. Just look at the markings on it. They're for Royal Artillery. All these vehicles originally were marked up for the Royal Artillery. And then later on, they were all changed over to um, Royal Armoured Corps. Didn't make any difference, really. They still were the same vehicle and still fired the same missiles. They just wore different markings and the crews wore slightly different uniforms and badges. And that was all it amounted to. But it meant that the, um, the vehicle came as a, um, uh, an anti-tank vehicle of the Royal Armoured Corps and was probably more likely to be used by then in the anti-tank role than the Royal Artillery, who see things slightly differently. But there we are. Um, and that's how the vehicle began. And this one is actually marked up in Royal Artillery colours. It was actually one of the earliest of the range of CVR vehicles that we had in the museum, which means it's um, going back a bit now and lacks all the, the new bits on the new vehicles, like the um, Cummings diesel and that kind of thing. It's also got the old flotation screen. It was raised when the thing went in the water. And when it was in the water, it swam using its tracks which were absolutely useless, in fact, it more or less went where the tide took it. But um, that's how it worked. The screen came up, it was a fabric folded thing, rather like the bellows on an old camera. And when it came up, it provided the driver with a, a distorted view through a transparent panel at the front, but otherwise was more or less the same, same colour as the rest of the vehicle. And that went all the way round. But that's been removed from almost all the CVRs now. You'll find them 
running without the screen on because the screen brought, um, brought out this amphibious side, which wasn't a lot of use. He has a crew of three. One is the driver who sits down here in the lower frontal portion. Behind him with the big cupola there is the commander who scans the whole area and commands the rest of the crew. And sitting next to him with the missile sight is the missile operator, the chap who actually fired the missiles at the tank. Now the other thing is the vehicle carries five swing fire missiles. It carries five more inside as spares and they can be reloaded in their boxes. They come in a box and the box is also the missile launcher. So you load them into the thing up here, the launching thing up here, all ready to go. But they, they carried all together a total of 10 missiles with the missiles at the back and folded down. It doesn't even look like a, a guided missile vehicle. It just looks like an ordinary Spartan and can carry on until it comes into action. And then, and only then, do you see the teeth that make it the anti-tank weapon it is. Now the whole idea of wire-guided missiles has finished. You don't see them anymore, hardly at all. They've more or less gone. But they were in their day quite a, an interesting answer to the heavy main battle tank, because in theory, they could knock it out almost without seeing it for about two and a half miles away, which is quite good except that the, somebody, in this case the, uh, the missile operator, has got to work the whole thing from there. He's got to keep an eye on the target, track the missile while it's heading in, and um, not deviate until that missile has blown up the tank that it was aimed at. So it um, requires a lot of the missile operator. He mustn't be distracted. And um, you need to bear that in mind with these vehicles. They look good and the idea is brilliant, but it sometimes reckons without the human side to things, and that's what makes the difference. If they're not top of their form, they won't react in the right way and they'll get clobbered. But uh, on top of their form, they're deadly. And that's the, the great thing about this vehicle. It really is quite a, an ingenious, answer to a problem.